The Branding Your Business podcast is for small business owners looking to build a customer favorite brand and a value driven business. From solo shows covering marketing tactics to experts sharing their brand stories, each episode delivers actionable insights for entrepreneurs who want to impact the world. We're sharing how strategic moves and authentic connections can build a profitable business minus a burnout. Tune into the Branding Your Business podcast with me, Praise Santos McKenna of Come Plum, to design a brand your audience adores while building a life you love. Okay, Ruthie, we're here. We are. After many moons of us trying to make this happen, <laughs> We finally made it. We're here in person together. Mm. Thank you again for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. So you all have to know I'm like one of the biggest fans of Ruthie, of Ruthie Kim. <laughs> amazing, amazing woman. And we have the honor of having her on the Branding Your Business podcast. She is someone who I've admired from afar and have had the honor to get to know you closer and closer. Mm-hmm. But let me brag about you a little bit. So um Ruthie, she'll probably get into this a bit, but you moved to San Francisco from the UK in your teens, Yeah, had such a heart for the city and stayed on, um, did mission work and then founded the nonprofit called Because Justice Matters, which you all do so many things for women and girls in the tenderloin. But when I talk about it to my friends, I say, can you believe there's a nonprofit that teaches girls leadership through dance? Mm. And I'm just like, that is the most amazing thing it it's all my values come together mm. lifting women up getting women like also in tune with their bodies through movement of helping them find what's inside them but then you also have an amazing team running it these this team who also fulfills their purpose by serving girls and women and so you have this incredible thing going on there at bjm but then you kind of transitioned out of that and now you are in executive coaching and leadership and she has this amazing conference coming up called Golden that I get to be a part of in just a few weeks. So we'll touch on that a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a mother of two boys, wife to Brian, dog owner of Cali, who is very popular. If you are in very the popular. Uh, inner Richmond, outer Richmond, outer, outer Richmond, Richmond. she is down by the beach. Yeah, You'll see her in Cali and you'll know that that's really her. Mm-hmm. Um, that is just a short introduction to an incredible woman. Would you like to share a little bit more about yourself? Things I didn't touch on, maybe. Oh, wow. You did a great job on, on touching on, on most parts of my life, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously born and raised in the UK. And so there's still a huge part of me that's very British. Mm-hmm. But I am officially American. And I've lived here 24 years in San Francisco. Love the city, mm-hmm. like I know you do. Um, really believe in it and feel planted here. And mm-hmm. love being a mom, love being a wife, love wearing many hats. I know yeah. you and I have talked about that a lot over the years. Um, yeah, I, I love the work that I've done and I'm doing with Because Justice Matters. And I'm now in a totally different season and stretching and growing and expanding into new things. And I know we're going to get into that. But um, Lots of great, lots of great things happening in my life that I'm very grateful for. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, here's like, tell us a little fun fact of, I know this, uh, what's your favorite holiday? And you go ham over this holiday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I'm really big into, into Christmas and it includes the Advent leading up to it. So it's a, it's a full package of numerous weeks decorations and celebrations and I mean this last Christmas we hosted four different holiday parties in our home and um and then the advent season leading up for me as a person of faith is a a really important season so yeah it's a big deal for the Kims so mind you this is January so now there's only what like 340 days till Christmas I'm counting down (laughs) it's coming soon coming soon but we're going to be talking about other things besides (laughs) holidays on this podcast interview so you said a little bit about, yeah, you've been here in the States for a bit, but your kind of journey to get you to this point hasn't been very linear. You want to tell us some of the plot twists of coming here, like being in the nonprofit mission work and then feeling the tug of like, wait, is there something more beyond this? Because I would love for people to peek behind the curtain and see yeah. kind of how that happened. Yeah, well, I love that question, first of all, praise that whole idea of is there something more? It's, you know, central to my values of how I live my life and run my business. But I I just feel like that's an invitation for all of us to always be asking, is there something more? And I think, honestly, that my life has kind of reflected that question. So I knew at 16, I was moving out here, Mm -hmm. um, had a very specific call to come Mm -hmm. work in the inner city. And did that work for 24 years and it looked like a lot of different things predominantly in the tenderloin of san francisco starting because justice matters 15 years ago um 
with one idea, with one dream to do one thing and it kind of snowballed and now it exists beyond me, which is exciting. And I was really in that industry. I was locked in, in that, that area of focus. That was my passion. I loved it. It was really all I'd ever done. Mm. And so when I pivoted out of that a couple of years ago, it was a big plot twist. Yeah. I, I knew it was time for me to leave from being the executive director because just as matters, I knew that the young lady that was stepping into my role was totally more than ready and she's done a fantastic job and I didn't know what was next. And it was, it was kind of staring out into the distance being like, I know I'm done, but I don't know what's next. And that was, that was a really terrifying, terrifying space to be in. Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize that. I thought mm-hmm. you almost had stepped out because you were already doing this on the side and then you were transitioning, but it sounds like you just knew for sure that was ending. Correct. Yeah. I had been doing kind of side hustle coaching, as I call yeah. it, <laughs> for quite a few years. So I was yeah. running because just as matters and I was taking calls in the evening and yeah. that was great and I loved it. And then I stopped doing that for a season because mm-hmm. BGM was growing, my kids were growing, there was so yeah. much going on. So when I stepped out of being the executive director, I really was looking at a blank canvas. And, you know, it's funny, I I think I actually have never really shared this before, but I think I thought that opportunities would come to me. Like I was kind of like, well, I've been doing all this stuff. Things will come. And things didn't come. (laughs) And um, I was kind of in this limbo of like, well, what's next? And actually it was a podcast, ironically enough, here we are on a podcast, that was part of the linchpin pivot for me. And um, towards the end of my time of transitioning out, I started listening to this podcast about, about coaching. And I just remember riding the buses in San Francisco, listening to the po- this podcast thinking, I love this. I love everything about this. I'm lit up. And you know, you and I know when you're lit up, right? Like yeah. you can see it on other people, you can feel it in yourself. And it's such a special feeling to stumble across like, oh my gosh, I'm passionate about this. So that was like the turning point for me. And through a series of conversations and, you know, I would say divine appointments, I was like, I think I'm going to go after this. But I didn't feel this strong sense of like, this is it forever. I didn't even know if it was really going to work, but I knew it was the next step. So that's kind of what got me heading back into the direction of full-time executive coaching. Well, and that's really huge just because... I feel like I've had so many conversations with people who are in transition and they're trying to figure out like what's next. And to tell your friend, like, you know, when you see, or, you know, when you feel it, it's kind of in a very Western world where we're very logical step by step by step. Yes. It's hard for me to convince women, especially like what lights you up? Follow that. Yes. Yeah. How did you, I guess, give yourself permission to just like, oh, I love listening to this podcast. This is giving me a lot of joy. I'm radiant because of it. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to do it. Well, I think I definitely felt the tension because, and I think this maybe is also what you're referring to, when people are facing transition, there's like the side of the side of like passion, right? Like what lights me up? What am I interested in? And on the other side, you've got bills to pay. You've got responsibilities. You've got, um, you know, the logic, like you said, of like, I don't know, maybe if I do this, what if it doesn't work out, what's going to happen? So I was feeling all of that. And I I never want to paint a picture of like, yeah, you know what? It was so easy. Like I was terrified. I'd sleepless nights. I frequently said to my husband, like, I'm making a mistake. I'm just going to go get a job and go get a nine to five. Like, you know, all of that was going on. I think what allowed me to do it was there had been enough small moments in my life where I have followed that kind of lit feeling, mm-hmm. that that passion, that part of you that goes, ooh, there's something there. Mm-hmm. I had done that enough times to see the value of it. And by value, I mean, not that everything always turned out perfectly, but the value of like who I have become because of doing that, like following those nudges, taking those risks, I've become the kind of person, I am becoming the kind of person I want to be. I want to be a risk taker. I want to be adventurous. I want to see possibility. That's how I want to set up my life. And so it was a lot of little steps along the way. So when I was at this transition point, it was like I was facing this decision of like, who do I want to be in this moment? I can be cautious. I can be scared. I can be stagnant. Or I can just throw myself at this thing and we'll figure it out. And thankfully, I had the support of my husband, and I threw myself at it. And so far, it's going pretty good. (laughs) This is why I fangirl over this woman, too, because yes to all of this. Mm -hmm. I second this. I thumbs up it. Just 
because I feel like there are people now that the, the roles have switched. Now you're on a podcast speaking and someone's mm-hmm. going to be listening to this. And I know they're getting goosebumps right now because mm-hmm. I know that they're probably thinking, should I take this risk? Should I take this leap? Can I trust that God will catch me there? Can I trust myself that I am capable of this too? Yeah. And we need more stories of people like you who are like, hey, I had those feelings too and I still acted on it. Yeah. And I moved forward, which is huge because I know also your heart really is for women, which we'll kind of dive into more, which is mm-hmm. also like the Venn diagram of our work together. <laughs> um, and that you are so gifted at unlocking the potential in people and the purpose in people, which Mm -hmm. this is a nod to Golden. (laughs) Um, In that, because I imagine in a lot of the coaching conversations, personal conversations you have, you hear a lot of these transitions, a lot of these women who are kind of keeping themselves back. And I love this as a question of what is the kind of person I want to be? Yeah in this moment? Like what other advice do you have for people who are asking themselves that question? What other tools and tips can they be thinking through as they're asking themselves that question? Yeah. Well, it's a question I love to chat with my clients about, like, who do you want to become? Or sometimes I say, who do you need to become? Mm -hmm. Because someone will come to me often with a vision of like, hey, this down the road, I see myself doing this thing. And I think we often fall into the trap that like someday I'll just wake up and be the kind of person that can, I don't know, write a book, start a business, do a podcast. Like that'll just suddenly hit me. And that's not the reality. Like we often have to become someone Mm. new to fulfill the dreams that we have, Mm. to like see that vision come about. And so I'll often say to my clients, like, who are you becoming or who do you need to become? And then tell me what that person does. So they'll often say like, well, I don't know. She probably needs to be a risk taker. She probably needs to be bold and courageous. But what does she do with her days? Tell me about that. Like if if you woke up and you were that risk taker and you were that courageous person, what would she do in the transition? How would she, would she respond to the situation? And it just starts to get people thinking outside of the box. A little possibility. I think sometimes we get stuck in, and often I hear this in coaching too, so this is just the way I am. I'm, this is who I am. I'm, it's okay. You're that person, but I'm this person. And I think there's huge value in realizing that, that any moment in time can be a moment of transformation. Like we can literally change, like through this conversation, we're being changed, right? People who are listening are being changed. And I love those transformational spaces. I love that about coaching. I love that about preaching. I love that about retreats. Like let's all come together and believe to your point, there's something to be unlocked. And I, and I think I'll often say to folks, like, like I do the work that I do of unlocking because I believe there's something in there. Mm-hmm. If there was nothing in there, like, what am I doing? You know, mm-hmm. but I genuinely believe that every single person has a vision inside of them, has a more, whatever that looks like. And it can be unlocked and through courageous steps and integrity and like community, all of those things can, can be brought out. So I don't know if I'm answering your question, but you I'm are. just like talking about what I'm passionate about. <laughs> I like, I could feel the passion exude from you, which that was such a visual example that you gave in that you say you're in the, in the work of unlocking people because you really believe that there's something inside there absolutely to be unlocked. Yeah. And I think that is so interesting just because sometimes other people can see that there's mm-hmm. something to be unlocked inside of you mm-hmm. before you get around to believing that too. Yeah. So this ties into community and yeah. into people coming alongside of you too. I encourage you to ask yourself those questions. Maybe yeah. this podcast asks, acts as a community for these people, yeah. for them to ask these questions. And I didn't prep you with this question, but who are the people in your life mm-hmm. who helped you? I know that Brian, it sounds like, mm-hmm. has been so supportive. Um, love to hear stories about Brian or other people in your life who have helped you see, like, Ruthie, you have this. Bring it out. Yeah. Unleash it. Unlock it. Who yeah. are those people? Yeah, I am absolutely ready for that question. Oh, I've okay, a lot of those people in my life. I'll, I'll say one thing before I answer your question. Um, I think there are people that come into our lives as gifts that we didn't, we didn't make happen. They're just like suddenly there, they see something, they call it out, they support you, they empower you, whatever. And then I do think there is an invitation for all of us to seek those people out. And we, we can get into the nuance of the difference there. But, um, you know, immediate people that come to mind, 
my pastor, our pastor, um, when I started preaching at our church, that was a big shift for me. Um, I had spoken in groups, done talks in smaller groups, but to get up in front of hundreds of people on the regular, um, to be invited into that space, um, Dave Lomas is definitely one of those people. I've had a couple of really significant coaches in my life, my current coach, Joseph, and my previous coach, and this is the power of coaching, not only seen things and called it out, like encouragement, oh, I see that, you should try that, but challenged me, disrupted my small thinking, my limited thinking, like at times that's uncomfortable, at times the call out doesn't feel like, oh my gosh, you're so great at this. Sometimes it's when people say, you're playing small, you're on this planet to do something more. And I've had people like that in my life, specifically those coaches that, you know, you kind of lean back in your seat, like, oh, that stung a little bit. And you're right. There's an invitation there. Um, so I can point to, to people like that, women along the way in ministry with me, my leader when I was um, at Because Just As Matters, Tim Svoboda. Oh man, when I started Because Just As Matters and I didn't know what I was doing and he was just like, I believe in you, do it. And, and you know, to have people that will like come around you with resources and wisdom, there's been a lot of those folks along the road. I really believe, you know, as a person of faith, I really believe we're designed for community. I believe there is a creator that placed us on this planet with people around us and that there are parts of us that can only be unlocked in community. Like, I think that when we silo ourselves or isolate, um, we actually miss out on our own potential. Like, we need people to come along. So whether these people come spontaneously or whether we invite them, um, there's been countless people along my journey. And and my husband, you know, like you said, Brian. I could tell you so many stories about Brian. But um, I think I was listening to a song today as I was driving through the city. I forget what song it is. It's an old one, but the lyrics are something like, um, I'll be your greatest fan in the world. Mm -hmm. And as I listened to it, I thought that's my husband and he has been my biggest fan. And that has not just meant sitting on the sidelines going, yeah, go, you get it. But it has meant um, saying, I got the kids this weekend, go do your thing. You need to make a financial investment into your future. It's yours. Take our bank account. Like those kinds of very like I'm with you moments that we can get from partners or family or friends. So there's been a lot of people along the way that have, have helped Ruthie Kim become Ruthie Kim. <laughs> she was prepared for the trick question. She's like, I've got this list of cheerleaders in my back pocket. They've been the best. When you were talking about your leader, when you're um, BJM, yeah. who said, I believe in you, do yes. it. I just got goosebumps. And I'm like mm -hmm. low-key tearing up of, we need people in our life, even though you know they believe in you, they love you, they trust you, them saying it yeah. probably makes such a huge difference. Yeah. And the fact that you're quoting this years, years after that, that has happened. Yeah. That's the power yeah. of community and encouragement. Mm -hmm. You brought up something so good in that those people were gifts in your life. How does someone seek out that? How does someone like call, call it in? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm curious how, how you've seen that work best. Yeah. I think there's a lot of different ways to go about it. In my, my coaching cohort with women, we do a whole um, conversation around this, which we, we talk about transformational community. And we really kind of audit our lives and say, do I have transformational relationships? And what I mean by that is this exact concept, like are there people in my life to me and, and people in my life from me where this kind of back and forth, calling up, calling out both support, I'm with you, I got you, I'm for you, and challenge. Hey, I see you're getting in your own way. Or let me let me point out a limiting belief. Like there's that kind of push and pull that's happening in relationships. And um, so we all need that kind of transformational community. And there's lots of ways to go about doing it. I mean, I work as a coach. It's, it's often how people come to me. Uh, and they say like, I, I need this person in my life. I think we can find that in friendships. I think we can find that in faith communities. But I think the, the part that is um, crucial in there is the intentionality of what do you want? Because I think a lot of times we're playing just friends. We're like just hanging out. But is this a transformational relationship? Like, am, am I here because I want your absolute best? Do I love you enough to speak truth to you? Do you love me enough to speak truth to me? Is there that kind of intentionality? So I think if people are listening and they're sitting at home thinking, oh gosh, I want to unlock something in me. I think I probably need help with that. 
I think get clear on what you need help with. Like, do you need someone to challenge you? Hire a coach. Do you need someone to support you? Get your community around you. Ask for that. One of the greatest challenges that I've sometimes given my women's cohort is like, go ask your community what they think about you. And sometimes people freeze up. They're like, I don't want to ask. I don't know what they're going to say. And I'm like, this is a resource for you. Go ask your community, what are your top five gifts? What are the top five ways you are getting in your own way? Like get that feedback, not as criticism to tear you down, but as fuel to like power you forward. This is how we become someone new. This is how we do dangerous, crazy, risky things. It's because there's a voice of our community going, I see you, you've got this, keep going. Okay, stop doing that. Do this instead. Like that kind, those kinds of relationships. So figure out what you want. Go ask for it boldly. And, and I think this is, sorry, I'm just going on with this one. I'm passionate get about it, this one. But like ask for it. And I, and I know for a lot of women, that's, there's uh, in particularly my conversations with women, it's like, I want it, but what if they say no? What if they say no? But what if they say yes, right? Like I invited you to come be part of Golden. I didn't know what you were going to say. You said yes. You invited me to be on your podcast. Could have gone either way. I said yes. Like there are moments where you make big asks, big swingers. People say no. Someone said no to me today on a big ask. That's cool. Let's move on, you know? So I think we have to confront that fear of rejection. We have to confront that fear of like, well, if they say no, what does it mean about you? It means that you're like being ballsy and gutsy and you're going after big things. In the coaching world, sometimes we say yes lives in the land of no. You've got to hang out with enough no's before you get your big yes. Um, in fact, if you haven't had any no's, you're probably not swinging hard enough. So I would say figure out what you want, be intentional, go ask for it seek it out and take it as resource. Mm, yeah, that is huge. And I feel like kind of in the audience that we serve, asking can be so scary. Yeah, Asking can terrify us of the what ifs they say no. What right. if that, and it, it's an anxiety inducing feeling. Yes. Uh, I have the privilege of talking about influence coming up at yeah. Gold. And I've been reading a ton of more books about it. I feel like I just want to read up more. And I was reading mm. about this book. It's called Influence is Your Superpower. Mm. And it's this Yale professor who teaches MBA students and she has such funny assignments for them. One of them is for a week or two, she wants her students to get as many no's as they can. Yes. Just to ask ridiculous things so that the the nuance, the novelty of it, you get less scared. And it can be mm. simple things of she has an example of someone going to Krispy Kreme and asking the person behind the counter, can you design me the Olympics logo out of donuts? <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be serious, but we have to, it's a muscle. Yes. So we have to learn how to ask for it. But as someone who has been on the asking and receiving end of someone saying, hey, can you be a transformational relationship in my life? Mm -hmm. And can you be that to me too? Yeah. It's not often that people will say no. And honestly, if you ask enough people, you'll get enough people yeah. to say yes to that, which yeah. I think is really huge and really important. I love, Ruthie, that you're giving the steps of what we talked about earlier of the person that you want to become doesn't happen overnight. It's yeah. steps. These are really practical ways to get there of asking people to be part of your community mm -hmm. and kind of taking big risks mm -hmm. to get there too. One of the uh, big questions I have for people when they come on this podcast, which I also think is part of the person that you're wanting to become, is as you branch off into building your business, building your coaching business, there's a lot of values that you have mm -hmm. put into it. And I would love to talk to you about that because I know that people are attracted to you specifically as a coach for certain reasons. Mm -hmm. I know that I look up to you a lot just because you do tell it how it is. Mm. There's that candidness, but there's also mm -hmm. this huge encouragement and belief. But can you share with us what the brand values that you put into your business and why yeah. you chose them? Yeah. So my, my brand values are my life values. And for my line of work, that works. That's not for everyone, but it works for me. And I landed on these actually a couple of years ago when I really started out in my business and, um, but I think I'd been living them for a long time. And, and this is a process I, I, I take a lot of my clients through too, is just like, okay, indicators of what your values are, they will be breadcrumbs throughout your life, right? You'll see that these things have mattered to you. So I did that work a couple of years ago and landed on three values. My values are courage, celebration, and possibility. So what that looks like for me is it's both how I go about running my business and also 
the work that I do with my clients. So for example, courage um, is exactly everything I was just talking about. Like I try as best as I can to take big swings. Like I want the work that I do to be coming out of big, bold asks, courageous steps. I want to try and be out of my comfort zone as much as I can possibly stand, right? It's never comfortable for anyone. That's kind of how I want to position myself. So that might look like, um, you know, how I promote what I do, um, doing a big event like Golden that other people might look at and say, oh, she's so in her wheelhouse. And I'm like, I'm so outside of my comfort zone right here. Like this is taking a lot of courage, like that kind of thing. And then infused into the work with my clients. And, and hopefully if any of my clients listen to this, they will hear these values and go, oh, yeah, I see that in our work. Like I'm always inviting my clients into a deeper place of being courageous. I always want to like kind of put my finger on like, where, where's that limiting belief? Let's disrupt that fear. What's getting in the way of courage? So that's what courage looks like. Celebration for me is like, I, um, I wouldn't say it was like a natural value for me. And I, it's funny that you mentioned Christmas because I've really moved into this place where I find celebration to be an absolute lifeline for me. I spent 20 plus years working in San Francisco, predominantly in the inner city. You see a lot of stuff. You experience a lot of stuff. And early on, I knew if I did not create rhythms of celebration, I was going to die. Like I was just going to see too much. I was going to feel too much. Like it's hard. And, um, and so it started slow for me. And then I started realizing, hang on, this can be a lifestyle. This is really fun. Like, <laughs> and so it became everything from, um, you know, my kids celebrating small things to like mantras that our family uses to celebrating like business steps, you know, like it is not uncommon for my husband and I to raise a glass in the evening to one cool email that came in, you know, like it's like infuse that celebration into how we build my business. And then with my clients too, like I'll often say, let's pause for a moment and just celebrate what you just said. Let's celebrate because we don't celebrate often enough. And then finally, possibility. I mean, this goes back to your original question of the more. I like to live with a sense of possibility. So with my business, I'm always trying to like push myself like, okay, where's the more? Where's, where's the impossible? How could we reach into that? With my clients, I'm always trying to invite them into that. Like, what do you not yet see that could be there? Let's just dream for a moment. I think there's always possibility. I think there's always resource available. I think there's always one next step you can take. So those are my values. Those are some of how I weave them in. Yeah, no. And I could see courage, celebration, and possibility in all that you produce, mm -hmm. which I want to talk about Golden as well. And yeah. this is also the Branding Your Business podcast where we talk a lot about, okay, let's make sure that your brand values are reflected in everything that you produce. Yeah. How do you envision courage, celebration, and possibility coming out at Golden. How will attendees experience those values? Oh my goodness. Well, hopefully, first of all, they're going to see it demonstrated. They're going to see it modeled. So I'm thinking about the team that's coming mm -hmm. together. I'm thinking about our speakers who are going to courageously get up and share in, you know, step outside of their comfort zone for some. Um, so hopefully gonna, they're going to feel that, that, that's just around them. It's the water that they're swimming in. Celebration. I mean, we are celebrating women. I mean, we are celebrating that female energy. Yes, we're there because we want transformation. Yes, we're there to meet with God, to be with community. But my goodness, you know, from the decor that we have spent time carefully thinking about, um, there is going to be a disco ball. I'm just dropping that right now. There's a disco ball. Um, you know, all of those kind of things. Like, this is a celebration, like calling, um, purpose, potential, influence. These can feel like weighty topics. We're like, oh my gosh, why am I on this planet? No, girl, let's make this fun. And I know this is this is your wiring too, praise. Like, this can be fun. This should be fun. So they're gonna see that. Um, and then possibility. I mean, that is honestly really the overarching theme to a lot of what we're putting together is there is more. And that will be what I will be saying from the stage and hopefully speaking directly into and actively inviting the women at the end of the day to step into, into greater courage. What does it look like to leave here and make a courageous next step into celebration? Look how far you've come. Celebrate today. And then possibility. There's more. Don't stop. This is, this is one day, but it's a catalyst. Like there's so much more. So that's what women can expect when they come to Golden, 
we're hopefully going to embody that as a team. We're going to invite women to be in that together. And this golden sisterhood is just going to practice courage and celebration and possibility together. I just imagine all these golden women yeah. leaving the reality ground. Exactly. <laughs> Put on your sunglasses, San Francisco. Golden is happening. Right. That'll be so good. I'm so excited to be a part of it. And I'm so mm. glad for people to hear more of your story. The heart behind this podcast is that oftentimes we see people with a business or a brand. And I imagine there's so many of our listeners who look up to you so much, but they don't know the full backstory of mm. the doubt that had to overcome to get here, the uncertainty to get here. And to be able to normalize that is so important. And so yeah. I'm so grateful that you shared your story and also very actionable tips for people who are in these transition phases of what to do to take that next step, how to build that community of transformation mm. so that you can continue to take the next steps. I feel like this has been super valuable. I know Aww. I have learned a lot. And this is also an invitation because Golden is coming up on coming up. February 17th. We're going to have a disco ball there that you all can <laughs> come out and just have more kind of these heartfelt conversations yeah. like these so that they can transform. This is the transformational community perhaps they've been looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be so excited to continue this even then. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you so much for having me. This has been an honor. I'm so excited about your podcast. It's inspiring to me, and I know that you're blessing your listeners. So thank you, Grace. We call that blessed blessing. May you all, <laughs> may you all be blessed. <laughs>